Japanese manufacturer Togo is notorious for making some rides that have, unfortunately, a pretty bad reputation, at least here in America. In Japan, their rides are actually pretty good, surprise, surprise. And while they're not the tallest or the fastest, by far one of the most standout attractions they've created is the Ultra Twister. If you ever went to Six Flags Great Adventure a few decades back, that and Astro World are the only two parks in America who have built one of these. Unfortunately, neither of them are left standing, which means if you want to ride one of these, you have to go to Japan. And I had the opportunity to ride two of them, and I believe there's only four in the entire country. One of them actually has an extended layout featuring a dive loop. Unfortunately, I did not get a chance to experience that one. But the other three that I saw all feature the same layout. You might have noticed I said three there, but I only rode two. Unfortunately, the one at Brazilian Park with Shoes in Highland was closed, I believe because it was getting repainted. So I've included some general shots of it, but I did not get a chance to experience it. So the ones that I rode were at Nagashima Spyland and Greenland. And this is gonna be my full in-depth review about this attraction. Because not a whole lot of people have had the opportunity to experience one of these, I think a lot of people are wondering, okay, are these rides really that good? Is this something that I should try and experience at some point in my life? And spoiler alert, the answer is yes. This ride is pretty freaking sweet. And briefly just looking over the stats, they're not exactly really impressive. Less than 100 feet tall, only 44 miles per hour max speed, short track length. However, you have to keep in mind that this ride is not about any of those stats we just mentioned. Really, it is about just the sheer experience. This is a very strange ride. You essentially sit on the same horizontal plane as the track, and the track is very thin. You'll find it on either side side of you, and it's just a steel pipe, which means visually it's a very bizarre looking ride, especially when you start looking at some of those inversions. So don't go into these expecting the greatest thing ever, however, what you can expect is a very unique experience and something that you'll walk off of going, wow, I've never experienced anything like that before, and I think I liked it. This ride isn't earth shattering by any means, but it is absolutely memorable. And you'll quickly realize that from the moment you enter the station, you board this vehicle with the train facing backwards, and therefore you depart the station facing that same direction, and the vehicle locks in right at the base of the lift hill and rotates you 90 degrees facing the sky. I think that is a very memorable start to a ride. And you haven't even done anything yet. So you ascend straight up, crest over the small little apex, and immediately face the ground. You're looking at an 85 degree descent, almost straight down. And it's a very quick transition going from looking straight up to now straight down. And before you know it, you're rapidly descending. Again, max speed is only 44 miles per hour, so it's not very fast, but that's okay. In my opinion, the true highlights of the ride come later. It's not the first drop. And I wouldn't even say it's the next element, which is an airtime hill. Although calling it an an airtime hill might be a bit of a stretch. I wouldn't say this hill is really designed for airtime. Yeah, you might get a little bit, but no one rides an ultra twister and gets off and says, wow, I loved the airtime. So I personally say don't go in really expecting much with that element. It's certainly cool. I like also that quick transition from that near vertical drop into the airtime hill. You quickly pop back up there, and the next element is when the ride gets good. The ride features three inline twists. One of them you face forwards, and two of them you face backwards. So the first one you experience right after that hill, and what's so cool about it is that they have all these rings supporting the track, and so visually, when you are riding this thing, it's almost mesmerizing. So the inversions, in my opinion, are probably the signature element element of these rides. But if you thought the ride was weird so far, just wait till you see what happens when you get to the end of this track, because this is a very long and narrow layout. It doesn't take up a very big footprint, but when you get to the end of this track, you slam to a stop. And I mean you slam. If you watch the rider's heads, yeah, you'll see him abruptly jerk forward, because this is a sudden stop. But then we have another track switch. Like how you tilted upwards at the beginning, now you tilt downwards, but not fully, it's at an angle, but now suddenly you're facing backwards. The ride releases you and you start building up some speed, again, not at a very steep angle, but then you experience two back-to-back -back inversions, each one of them facing the same direction. And then the ride is over, you hit the brake run, and then you're back in the station. Like I said, it is a weird ride. The first one I rode was at Nagashima Spyland, and I only got one ride on it because actually shortly after I rode it, it was down for the rest of the day and it didn't reopen. So I'm glad I rode it when I did. And as I mentioned, the one at Brazilian Highland was closed. So the one I got the most rides in on 
on was the Ultra Twister at Greenland. Again, they're all the same layout. I got two rides on that one and the one at Nagashima. And each time I rode it, I rode in a different row. Again, because there's only three rows. I gotta say, front row is definitely the best. But going back to what I was talking about, when I first got off of it, I was like, wow, that was weird. I, I'm not sure what to think about it. I think I liked it. But then after I rode the one at Greenland and I knew what to expect, I could really enjoy it. And when I got off the second time, I said, wow, that was awesome. I'm just gonna go again, like right now. Why not? It didn't have a line. I would say it was actually my favorite ride at Greenland, which when they have 10 coasters, that's pretty good, especially since this isn't an original layout. But I think to just kind of wrap this up, I am a big fan of Togo Ultra Twisters. And now that I've done rides like Bandit and Fujiyama, which are these huge, massive Togo coasters, I think the Ultra Twister is still my favorite ride that I have done by Togo. I really like these coasters. They're so weird but they're cool. When I tell people, oh yeah, I went to Japan to ride roller coasters, and they're like, okay, tell me about some of the weird ones there. I'll bring up the Ultra Twister. It's one of those iconic rides that is signature at this point only to Japan. And so for that reason, especially if you're in the country, you need to go and find one of these things and hop on. Trust me, it's not the greatest thing ever, but it is very fun and very cool. Oh, and did I mention it's smooth? Yeah, I know we don't often look at Togo as having the best profiling. A lot of their rides are looked at as rough. No, Ultra Twister is very smooth, for sure. For its final score, I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. That doesn't mean this is my number one coaster or even in my top 25. I think a ride like this is so iconic and so bizarre that I just had a really positive experience with them. And when I think about, oh, what would you change to make the ride better? I couldn't really think of anything. I could get like ridiculously nitpicky, but there really isn't a need to. It doesn't have to be the tallest, the fastest, the most G's, the most airtime filled ride in order to be fun and enjoyable. I wouldn't say the Ultra Twister does anything earth shattering, but it is a ride that after I got off, I said, man, I wish we had some of those back home. So that's gonna conclude my review of the Togo Ultra Twister. Let me know down in the comments below if you've had the opportunity to experience one of these rides, or if it's on your bucket list of something that you really wanna do one day. You can post all those thoughts down in the comments below, and of course, stay tuned for more reviews here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you guys next time.